to be treated differently. We want a fair financial system that treats everybody equally. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is not too much to ask. A fair international financial architecture is not a fair proposition or an unfair proposition to make. Number two, many of our countries are headed into debt distress because of climate change. Let's be honest, we are suffering the most, whether it is in the Sahel with drought, whether it is in the Horn of Africa with drought, whether it is in South Africa and the southern part of our continent with cyclones, and we are saying the suffering is across the globe but we carry the biggest brand. I'll give you, I'll contextualize this. And because of climate change, we are forced to divert resources that are meant for economic growth into dealing with the effects of climate change. I will contextualize this. In Kenya, we lost two and a half million heads of livestock in northern part of Kenya. Combined with Ethiopia and Somalia and Djibouti, we lost nine and a half million heads of livestock. So what did I have to do in Kenya? So in Kenya, I've had to increase resources meant for school feeding from a million and a half children in school under school feeding we've had to scale up this year to four million kids in school to be put under school feeding, and we've had to rearrange the budget to provide for that. So when we say climate change is destroying our economies, we are not making statements. We are making statements of fact. And that is what is driving many of our economies in that direction. And let me contextualize this further. When I was first elected as a member of parliament in a rural constituency in Kenya, I represented a community that is so proud that they think debt is not a good thing. They are risk averse and very debt averse. So, to try and encourage the community that time, then there was this phrase, and I want to uh, say it in, uh, in the indigenous community. There was a phrase that Kaigai Kobaren Besen Kosir Kobaren Banan. I will explain to you what that means. There is person and there is banan. Person is dead. Banan is poverty. So it is said in this community, if you must die, it is better to die of debt than to die of poverty. Because you are dying anyway. So it's... And so, to contextualize that into this debate, we don't want to die in this continent, we don't want to die of debt, but we also don't want to die of poverty. That is why we must have a conversation around multilateral development banks and concessional financing and how we can finance our economies using resources that do not punish us. And when we make this proposition, we have tremendous respect for our multilateral development banks. They are doing their best. We have the best of respect for them. But we believe they can do better. We, can be, we believe that there is an opportunity. We need to explore the SDR, Special Drawing Arts Rights Window. And this time round, 
we want to have that window when it's made available because it is possible. Let those who need the resources get, not those who, not those who don't. In the last experience, those who did not need the resources got more than those who needed the resources. We need to have a paradigm shift this time around. And number two, we believe that it is possible to expand concessional uh, financing through leveraging on the balance sheets of these institutions. And finally, to be able to unlock the resources that we need to be able to drive these new investment and financing opportunities, especially for green energy. We believe it is time to have a conversation about carbon tax. I said we need to have a conversation about carbon tax. And I mean we need to have a conversation about carbon tax. Yes. We believe it is the only way is among the ways that we can raise additional and adequate resources for us to finance our development. And while we are thinking about financing, for us in Africa, three things are very important. As they say in Kenya, mambo ni matatu. Number one, speed. It takes inordinate to access any meaningful resources. Number two, it requires scale because we've all agreed that enormous resources are required. And number three, affordability so that we all pay the same. And that is why this event is both Africa's climate summit and a global pre-COP28 convention. Africa is meeting and Africans are talking. The world is listening. We must use this opportunity to lead the world in a new direction towards a future that holds immense promise for both Africa and the entire world. The many initiatives showcased at this summit testify to the courage of African enterprise and innovators to pursue breakthroughs, exploit opportunities, develop models, and take risks to make our tomorrow better than our today. When the global talk take is released, there will be another opportunity to test our courage and resolve by asking each other hard questions in the spirit of fashioning the new way to achieve rapid improvements. We have therefore committed to conclude this summit with a declaration which will firmly encourage everyone to keep their promises, even in hard times, as a matter of justice, to hold each other to account, to collaborate, and to innovate. This African moment is a global moment. We are in word and deed, full stakeholders in this global journey and its primary navigators at this stage. I urge everyone at this summit to exercise bold leadership and contribute to our efforts to reconfigure global markets and international institutions around African aspirations and strategic goals. I call on each one of you to do their part so that the potential that lies in our continent can deliver opportunities for Africa's youth, communities, enterprises, and nations to actualize a future for all of us. It is a matter of long standing African wisdom that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. We have a long way to go and no time to lose. In this moment of existential urgency of whole humanity, I dare say 
that we have our ancestors' permission to innovate a way not only to go fast, but also go together, provided we consult thoroughly, engage in good faith, collaborate effectively, and proceed inclusively. This is an emergency, and we must undertake climate action and green growth with this understanding. I thank you. God bless you. God bless Africa. Asante san. Your Excellency, you have some tasks to perform, so please come back to the stage. I have been requested to ask the climate envoy from America, who is scheduled to take a flight, to take a few moments and come and speak to us. My good brother John Kerry is somewhere in this audience. Welcome because he also has a, 